medical culture, Here we go. medical research, and the prevention of child abuse. Imagine what it would be if, as a national policy, we said we would be only successful if we had fewer people going to the hospital next year than last year. The idea then would be to have such nutritionally dense, unadulterated food that people who ate it uh, actually felt better, had more energy, and weren't sick as much. You know, now, now, see, that's a noble goal. That was Virginia community farmer Joel Salatin, featured in Michael Politan, uh, Pollan's book, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and one of the good guys, you might say, in the new documentary, Food, Inc., which explores the ways in which we eat and the ways in which our food is produced and how those ways have changed dramatically in the last 50 years. Michael Pollan is also one of the heroes in the documentary, and the film presents plenty of villains, too. The documentary goes beyond what's in our grocery stores and traces the chain back, arguing that there is a policy deficit in this country. The film shows how there's been a revolving door between the farming conglomerates and the regulatory agencies overlooking them. Are you surprised? Companies are willing to go after the smallest farmer to protect their seed patents. And the effect on small farmers, our pocketbooks, and as you just heard Salatin describe, our nation's health are serious. And we will take up that um, radical proposal that came out of his mouth, basing food policy on fewer people going to the hospital. What about that as a bottom line, measurable uh, from, uh, from a food policy uh, administration? Joining us to talk about this film, we'll hear some more clips. Food writer Michael Pollan, author of the books In Defense of Food, The Omnivore's Dilemma, and The Botany of Desire, and Robert Kenner, director of Food, Inc. Hi, Michael. Welcome back. Hey, good to be here. Robert Kenner, welcome to WNYC. Thanks so much. And Robert, let's start with that clip that we just played of Joel Salatin, um, community farmer in Virginia. Was he just being over the top there, saying if we want to cut hospital visits in half, the first place we should look is our food policy? No, I think food leads to many other issues. It turns out to be uh, far more important than I ever imagined when I began this film. Um, when we realize that one-third of all children born after the year 2000 will develop early onset diabetes, uh, we're dealing with a major issue here. It's going to, you know, it's going to bankrupt the healthcare system. So we really have to start dealing. Uh, we're subsidizing food that is not making us well. It's making us sick. And Joel's suggesting maybe we can reverse that pattern and try to encourage good foods. Imagine what it would be to quote that same clip, if as a national policy we said we would only be successful if we had fewer people going to the hospital next year than last year. Michael Pollan, what is food policy based on now, if you can make a generalization? Well, you know, it was based on the health problem of the past, which was not enough calories. And in a way, we designed this system, which is to, to promote as much, uh, as many cheap calories as we can because the health problem used to be inadequacy of calories. Um, the farmers succeeded all too well, and now we have uh, a surfeit of calories, and we have people getting sick from overeating, and the wrong kinds of calories, because we, we uh, subsidized the corn and the soy, which are the building blocks of fast food. So the challenge now, and I think this is why Joel is exactly right, is how do you once again align the incentives of the food economy to promote the public's changed interest. And the, and the public's interest now is, is in having an abundance of healthy, fresh fruits, vegetables, clean meat. And uh, there's no reason you couldn't redesign the rules of this food game to give us that kind of food and get the result Joel's talking about. Related to that, another part of that clip that jumped out at me was that he said the idea would be to have such nutritionally dense unadulterated food that people who ate it actually felt better. Now the unadulterated part is the part that I think we usually focus on, getting all the crap out of the food. Um, but how about the nutritionally dense part? Do you think we actually have a nutrition deficit even as we have a calorie glut? Oh, we do. Um, we have, uh, there, are, there are children who subsist on a fast food diet, exclusive fast food diet, that come into health clinics. I know of one in Oakland with uh, nutritional diseases that we haven't seen since the 19th century, uh, rickets, things like that. Um, because this food is so rich in calories, but doesn't have the micronutrients that you only get from eating plants. 
So um, there is no question. And, and then there's the other issue, which is over the last 50 years, the nutritional quality of the produce we are eating has has diminished. Um, there is between 30 and 40 percent less of many, many key nutrients. Uh, to eat an apple today, you need to eat three uh, 2009 apples to get the zinc that you would get from one 1950 apple.